So you put your hands out there in your own time, and I best hear boom. Okay, I'm not gonna do them, but you go for it now. Go! Boom! That's what? Keep going to your required number. You, how many? Boom! Down! If you gave me six or seven, do six or seven. If you gave me four or six, don't be shy. Think about what you're doing. Come on! Boom! Yeah. Boom! Yeah. Boom! Yeah. Boom! 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 say to me, John, what bit of advice would you give me that can carry me as I go forward? I would say to you, get to learn to know your nature of who you are. This is really important. Know the nature of who you are. That's the thing that will drive you forward more than anything else. Be who you are, the nature of who you are. And your energy, your energy will be positive. Because you are aligning your energy with the nature of the person that you actually are. Now, you've got to be careful of this. Because some people will do a thing called a benchmark. And what they do is this. People like you in the university, your friends with now. One day you may look at them and say, my God, they've got a great job. They've got a partner. They've, they've got a great car. I'm going to pass off the call again. Look at me. I'm not nowhere near that. So what do we do? We compare ourselves. And we make this decision, and the decision that we make is that 
I want to be like that. Do something with it. It's the worst thing you'll ever do. Because it's, it's not aligned with your nature. Everything you do in this life has to be aligned with the nature that you are. When you align your energies together, like in flow, the things will just happen. And that's what the Tao means when it says, the Tao never does anything, but all will be done. It doesn't mean that you don't make an effort. It doesn't mean that you don't need to bother. What it means is that you need to align your energy with your true nature. How do you get to know your true nature? You've got to experience lots of different things. Today you're on a business management course or a psychology course. It may not be for you, but don't think in your own head that you made a mistake because you haven't. Everything you learn in this life, everything you take away with you in your life, you will use it in a way that perhaps you don't understand today. But you will use it. Because believe you me, I have found that out in my life. There's nothing in this life that I've learned and maybe I've not pursued it as a career, but there's nothing in this life that I've learnt that has not aided me and helped me. But it's even stronger when you align it with the nature of the person that you are. So focus your energy in a, in a correctly in alignment. Do not benchmark. You know, in life, there is a time for progress. In life, there's a time for frustration. In life, there's a time for going slow. In life, there will be a time for going fast. In time, there will be, in life, there will be a time for lots of energy. In time, in life, there will be a time for you to feel a bit more lazy about things. Okay? Be true to your nature, and all things will happen as they are meant to happen. Now, in this life, you can insure yourself against many things. You can insure yourself against a broken heart. You can insure yourself against a loss of job. You can medically insure yourself. But guess what you can't insure yourself? You can't insure yourself against an overactive mind. You cannot insure yourself against a broken spirit. You cannot insure yourself against a lost soul. I'm bringing it back. I want to back to everyone to talk about what's missing earlier. I want to say this to you is this. Scientists will talk about energy. Religious people, religious people will talk about spirit. On the street, they'll talk about things you've got to buy. Whatever it is, learn to connect with it. Learn to connect with it. Let that be your foundation. Let that be your guiding rod for you. Reach out. And when your brain is not working and it's not the answers aren't coming to you, know this. As you can walk away from it, go for a walk, go for a sleep, lie down. And the answers will come as you prepare to connect. Make it a friend and connect with it. Now, I am going to finish off now. I'd just like to do a, a little exercise with you because we've been talking about how you can't experience and I want, I want to show you a technique that I was taught by a time off when I, when I was in Thailand and uh, so let's, let's, let's do this now so if you place your right back of your hand in your left palm like this just sit with your back straight it's going to have a little upright right like so okay and what we're going to do is we're going to breathe through our nose don't need to use the mouth at all I just want you to breathe through your nose and close your eyes now and let it happen. Just breathe naturally. If you can hear yourself breathing, listen to my voice. Close your eyes. Relax. If you can hear yourself breathe, you're over breathing. Let it, let it happen naturally. And what I want you to do is this. As you breathe in, you will feel the cold air hit the inside of your nostrils. And that's where your focus is. You may move, your mind may wander, but I want you to come back to the internal breath. You may also be aware as you breathe of the blood 
well. And the diaphragm raises. So you think about the internal breath on the way in, from there, and you're aware of the small swelling, and the diaphragm raises, and then it just falls. So you just do that a few times. <coughs> Don't force anything. And I want you to return every time to the internal breath with your mind, and just return to the internal breath. Hold there for a few moments. What we're doing is we're slowing everything down. And this is the method of connection. As you breathe now, and your lungs swell, I want you to imagine the backs of your shoulders swell and the back of your neck swell. Allow them to swell. And then as you release, breathe naturally, allow them to collapse with your lungs. Now, like a balloon, when you let go of a balloon, the balloon goes everywhere. So what you're going to do when you breathe out, you're going to relax that, you're going to open that valve up, and you're going to let the air come out. And what you're releasing is all your anxiety and your stress. So you're breathing in, lungs raise, inflate the shoulders, the back of the neck, and then you allow it to happen naturally, but you can feel the stress and the anxiety and the stress, like a balloon. Thank you very much. That, that's it. I'm going to draw to a close here. So uh, hopefully I, I, I'm passing to you. 30 odd years of wisdom. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, hi, sir. Good morning. I'm Sachin Sir, currently studying business information systems, uh, second year undergraduate. Uh, I have a question like, uh, 
let's say if we are in a corporate sector or let's say if in a university group uh, work let's say if someone is not aligning with uh, our uh, our role so what kind of approach we should take to encourage them to get the work done what kind of ad advice you can give thank well, you I, I think that's a great question so thank you very much for that you're, you're absolutely right team building is difficult and I go that with it within the book. And I, 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 I identified four people. I, I saw the finisher complete a completer, a strategist, a tax, a task, a task doer, and a risk taker. And, and they represent four elements you, you will bring within the team. And what, what that book does, it shows you a way of identifying the type of people that you have within your team. So the book goes into in great deal. It's, it's a great detail with regards to that. But to answer your question, it's simply is this. I, I think the, the, the community side person, I'm going to talk to them, I ask them to talk to us. And then, I, I, you know, it's far, if the person was destructive, I'd want to get rid of them fast. Because there's no good, you know, there's that old saying, I don't know if it's in the UK, saying, you know, what one apple can spoil, spoil the whole barrel. And it's true. You know, he's not sharing your energy, and you've got someone that's sucking that energy from you, and you're spending more time trying to turn that person around than you do beat it. And I think you've just got to turn around and say, so if you can't overcome it, or there may be a bit of personal difficulty, and, and you, 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 you can appreciate it with the person, that you can understand, and perhaps you can support and help, and understanding is part of the process, isn't it? You know, but if the person's going to continue to let down and bring down the team, I think we have to uh, consider a relationship. <coughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Ritika. I'm a recent fellow graduate. Um, I wanted to know how would you avoid or work through um, sitting with negative emotions and the development of negative emotions like your memory and you know, getting such an emotionally uh, intensive downward spiral for a long period of time. So how would you approach um, that mindset. Can I say to you, we all struggle with that. Every one of us, and I do myself. The difference is, is this: I work on it. So even before I came, I came in there. You know, it, it, it came on. I was sitting there, so I thought, oh, God, I want to speak in front of people. But I knew, I knew from experience that when I got in the ring, I was always very nervous. Let's be honest, I'm scared every time I step into the ring. But I knew that as soon as it started, I was in the zone. You, you know, and I, I, I've taken a, a, a life learning lesson uh, from, from that. You have to work on it. That's the truth. And, and what you're talking about is this thing I, I alluded to earlier, habits, routines, and patterns. Because what we do, by the age of seven, your mind is set. You will respond in the way, fight, fight, or freeze, you've heard of that. You will respond in the way that you have been taught to respond, okay? So if your parents said to you, oh, don't jump off that, you're gonna hurt yourself. <clears throat> you will not jump off it, you, you know, the natural lesson, that, but you'll carry that with you. The question is, you've got to change the routine. And, and uh, in my opinion, the best way of changing the routine is not working on the mind straight away, but working with the body. Because it's easy to get focused and working on the body. I often say, get out your head and into your body, get into your arms and legs, move the body, and learn something. So there's, I'll have to refer to the book again, because in the book, I teach what I call non-intuitive, simultaneous movement of the body. And I do that, you know, psychologist, you, you, you love this. And, and I do it purposely because, because as soon as we move the body, we have focus, right? But you learn to overcome, and what, once you've learned to coordinate and overcome it, you've had a, va a valuable learning lesson. You've taught yourself what it is to overcome the coordination in your body and where you put your focus from. And therefore, the best way is to step forward and say, well, what can I do? Move my body as it's easy to. Learn something new and learn from that. And of course, there are simple things that you can do. I think they're a bit lip service, but they do help. You can start with a mantra, a mantra in the morning, you, you, you know. And I still do that myself. You know, I have to, and meditation is such a big one. It's such a big part 
of making this connection, disconnecting from the tugging of bigger than ourselves. All these things will give you confidence and new belief. But you can help yourself by training yourself to do something differently. Stepping out, you know, becoming familiar with the unfamiliar, stepping out into chaos. Because the more you become aware of that, the more you teach yourself physical and mental to do that, you will have coping skills to step you up from whatever that state of exaggeration in your life you have to step out from it. That would be the best advice. What, what point is it? Can you ask another question? Yeah. Um, I'm Diana, I'm a recent graduate student from the Digital Marketing and Public Capital Agency. And my question for you is that you mentioned that in order to find joy, you need to have a purpose in life. Mm -hmm. How do you get yourself out of the state of uh, inertia where you have no purpose and no desire to do anything? How can you be happy with not doing anything? <laughs> that, 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 is, that is a great question. Um, you might want to turn it around. I, 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 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question and say, so have you ever noticed that when you turn around and say, oh, put the assignment in, I've had a free time. And so what you do, you turn around and say, I'm going to veg out in front of the TV. So you put your fame in the fame, pay for the program up. But as soon as you do that, and this is meant to be your relaxing time, what does your mind do? Well, no, it just shuts off. It does, it does the opposite. In my experience, what your mind does is this. It looks for the problem. It looks for something that you haven't done yeah, before. That, 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 that's what it does. So what I'm saying, saying to you is this. A lack of purpose in itself can cause uh, um, anxiety within yourself because you've got no sense of direction. You've got no compass. You've got no internal sat nav that says to you that I, I want to do this or I need to do it. You know, we're all born and inside. Your, your mission in life is to find out what your purpose is in this life. And the only way you're going to find out is by doing what you're doing now. Go to university, learn in different things. It may not necessarily be what you do, but you will take it with you. And sooner as you get to know yourself, as you connect with your nature that aligns your energy, your purpose will come about. I don't believe anybody is born without without some form of motivation. You see a baby and a monkey bases to eat. There's a form of motivation there. And as you get older, you, you, you want to pursue something. And the fact that you're here today, that you're at university, says that you have a purpose in something, that you want to do it. And, and that's great. So I suppose I don't, I, I, I personally don't accept that born without motivation. The, the trouble of this, we can become conditioned, patterned habits and things, and we can say this is an easier thing to do. But can I just tell you one quick story? I've got a quick, quick, quick time for this quick story. I, 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 I want to reveal something about Mark myself. About a few years back now, I had a favourite dancer that was passed away. She knew she was dying. And she said something to me really pulled on my heartstrings. So she was in the mid 80s. She knew she was dying. And I was a nephew. She never married and didn't have kids. And there was a reason she never married, because she wanted to look after my now. So she felt sacrificed her life for someone else. And I told you about dinning your life earlier. And she wants to have this conversation with me about regret. And she'd come to the end of her life. And what she was saying to me is, I regret I'm amazed, look, John, that you're here, you're my nephew, but I wish I had my own son and my own daughter here with me. And that really, I, I felt like a coward because I didn't want to take that conversation on. And I regret now that I wasn't brave enough to embrace the conversation and, and move forward with it because it was so upsetting to let, listen to. So, you know, don't find yourself because every day you go by, your runway of life is running out. You know, tomorrow is not guaranteed. Make the best of today. Become the best version of yourself. Step up to the plate <coughs> and fly. Uh, just a quick question, sir. Um, what's your advice on uh, law of attraction? How an uh, individual can uh, visualize and um, like visualize and get into like a professional law, both person personal and uh, professional life? That's, that's, that's another great question. What I'd say to you is this. 
is that I was asking you to get to know yourself. The naturally of the nature of the person that you are and, and align with that. The law of attraction says we can attract what we want. I don't know if I agree with that. What I would say to you is you attract what you are. And that's a, that's a distinction there. If you're going to attract what you are, it means more importantly that you have to get to know the nature of what you are and who you are and align it with your energy and allow these things, as the Tao says, it never does anything. <laughs> allow it to happen. Okay, so it's not what you want. And that's why you've got to get your, build up on your foundations. Okay, find out who you are and you will get what you are. I'm so sorry to cut it short, but we are just coming up to time now. Um, maybe one final question. Anyone with a burning question? Yeah. Um, so, hi, my name is Andrea. Uh, I'm studying marketing management and I'm on my third year. So, I do have a question because uh, I do struggle a lot with imposter syndrome. So, I wanted to know to what extent it is more related with energy or if it's like a psychological state. Is there a difference between those? There, 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 there is. And without getting to know you, it would be wrong of me to say to you what it is. Because when, when people come to my door, you know, I, I can't say, oh, this is what's wrong with you. I, I have to sit and listen to that person over a period of time. And sometimes it's not what they say, but it's what they do. Because what they're doing is they're falling back into these ha ha patterns and habits. Look, you, you, to work on yourself and that what you've done here today you're here so when you're saying i suffer with imposter syndrome congratulate yourself because today you put yourself out to come to liverpool okay not for academia you came to help you and you should applaud yourself for that can i just give everyone a gift before we go and the gift i'd like to say my my website is www.com painpointcoach.co.uk www.painpointcoach.co.uk My email is win at painpointcoach.co.uk win, W-I-N at painpointcoach.co.uk You send me an email, I will send you an abridged version of this book free. So I'll create a coupon for it. It's on my online courses. It's a book, an e-book that you can download for first steps to flow. I will just send that to you. I'll create a voucher for a coupon for you. You'll know better than me. <laughs> You're not the technological age, but I'll have a coupon created for you. I'll send the coupon out. You'll go to the website. You'll stick the coupon in, and you will get the free book that indicates about flow. Can I do your email one more time? Win, W-I-N. I'll put, it, I'll put it in the chat as well. At painpointscoach.co.uk. I, I, I know you're going to have 15 minutes, so I'll have been there. Anybody wants to ask a question, please do come over and uh, we'll have a chat then. Well, thank you so much. Thank I hate to cut it short. Thank you so that you are the director of your own life, so embrace it and step out of your comfort zone, but also know the nature of who you are. So thanks for sharing all of your insights with our participants. And we'll have a little something, just a token of our appreciation. For oh, your well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you.